Olympics, was in the 2004 Olympics, and has been a terror as a pro. And he said, I'll take the first round to see what Matagua has. I want to box a little bit more against him, but if I see the opportunity to take him out, I'll go after him. And with that in mind, Al, three of Lopez's last five fights have been first round knockouts. <laughs> A good indication that it is possible. There's some precedent setting going on, that's for sure. Lopez comes in off our TKO and nine over Oliver Lanchi. Break, break, let him go, let him go. Well, Matago will be in front of Lopez. What has to work for Matago to be effective? He's awkward. It has to be effective. If it's not, he's a little bit too easy to hit for Juanma. Right hook by Lopez. He has a great right hook, and most of his knockdowns and knockouts come from the right hook. But when we asked him what's your best punch, he said the straight left. It's just that everybody's so busy avoiding that, I have to knock him out with the right hook. And there is that right hook landing by Lopez. And I love to see a southpaw with a good right hand, a good right power hand, because it's so rare. Yes, you are 100% correct, and it's very effective. Now, Matagua, who we mentioned, has a wild, oh, left hand lands by Lopez. He's landing big power punches early in round one. Bad news for Matagua. Now, Matagua was way behind in his fight with Tomas Villa and came back to beat him in a TKO on the 10th. It was a wildly exciting match but I don't know that he can afford to give that kind of advantage away to Lopez tonight. No, not at all. Uh, Lopez is an explosive uh, combination puncher as we, we've seen already. The right hook that kind of staggered Matawa a little bit. He can't afford to get hit with too many of them uh, shots. They want Matagua to move to his left as you're supposed to do against the lefty. And they want their right hand but also some left hooks what his camp has urged him to do. Well, it's not taking very long for Weinman to figure Matagua out. And the reason for that is Matagua's walk, walking right into punch. Right. And his hands are very, Matagua's hands are very low. Okay. Matagua, I mean, his, his style is very easy to figure out. He's going to be right there in front of you. It's totally different from uh, Weinman's last opponent, Oliver Lanchi, who gave him a lot of movement and had some kind of awkwardness to him. That's why the fight lasted nine rounds actually one got caught a couple of times with some straight rights from uh, oliver lanchi but matawa well, is going to be right there in front of him all, all night long as you point out a very different style well, it's been an excellent first round for lopez and matagua goes down but not from a punch a slip his balance has been an issue also for matagua so he got past round one anyway Keep your hands up high now, okay? Don't just rush in there now, okay? You just jab. Keep your heads down. Okay? Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. Give me the bucket. Okay? Keep your hands up. Stay relaxed. Stay calm. Okay? Keep your jab out. Okay? Put your heads down. Okay? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Be careful with the head. Don't be too wide. Bring them in close, okay? Well, there you go. Don't stand in front. Keep stepping around. Keep going out that left. Second down. That's the voice of Bo Bobby Boogaloo Watts you saw in there, who we mentioned, one of the few to be able to beat Marvin Hagler. We head into round number two. This one is scheduled for 10 with Juan Manuel Lopez on the right of your screen defending uh, his junior featherweight championship at 122 pounds against Rogers Matagua from Philadelphia by way of Tanzania. This is a 12 round battle, of course. Break, step back, step back. Let go, let go. This is a really good chance for Juanma to show the diversity he has because with an opponent coming to him, as Matagua is, Wama can box a little bit, show a little bit of movement. He's been an, just an assassin in most of his fights. And you see punches in round one, very, very high percentage for Lopez. That's the number that jumps out at you. 
But Tagwin now a little bit more effective with his pressure. At least he's landing a couple of punches to Lopez, but still getting hit with big counter punches. And the awkward style of Matagua is certainly difficult. But you make the point, Steve, that Lopez is showing some of the boxing skills he wanted to show in this fight because of Matagua's style. Needs to be a little bit careful with Matagua's awkwardness. He, he's coming in with his head a lot, and they did tell him in a corner in the last round, be careful with his head, so he needs to at least palm touch him with his jab. That way he won't run into a headbutt. And, you know, usually when you're a right-handed guy and a left-handed guy are fighting, that usually is the case. Yes. Left hand by Lopez. He uses all of this big ring at uh, Madison Square Garden here in the Wamu Theater. Right hook and a, a nice right lands by Matagua, but then Lopez comes back with the right hand. Matagua's starting to throw the right hand a little bit better, but he's paying the price by getting hit with combinations on, on his way in. Yeah, he's swinging a little bit too uh, wild. He needs to shorten up on his punches. The guy that is shortening up on his punches is Lopez. That's why he's connected on He's beating him to the punch. I mean, Lopez, is he's just an all-around fighter. He knows how to adapt to all kinds of styles. So far, he's, he's doing great here, having no problem with the, the Tanzanian fighter, uh, Matawa. Straight left hand moment to go to the body by Lopez as we're with about a half minute left in this round. Matago is letting that right hand go. Of course, that's the, usually the formula for success against the lefty. And this is the first lefty Matago's faced in seven years. That's amazing. He fought a lefty about four years ago, but the guy fought right handed. So this is his first <laughs> lefty in a long time. And it's taking him a little while to adjust, but he's starting to use that right hand. That was Agapito Sanchez, who normally is a lefty and did not fight that way. Good right hook landed by Lopez. So Matagua continues to attack awkwardly and now landed a nice left hook to the head of Lopez. But one, oh, another hook by Matagua right at the bell. So that at least made things a little interesting. I think that woke up for Lopez a little bit. Now it's starting to look like a Rogers Matagua type fight. Yeah. He's going back now. He's going back now. In round two, Rogers Matagua found some success with the right hand. Always the best weapon against the lefty, and that was a beautiful right hand. You see Lopez moving away for one of the few times where he had to move away and didn't choose to move away. Well, we talked about the tenacity of Matagua, and, you know, he's one of those fighters that we said he earned his way here. He fought a lot of good fighters, not necessarily great fighters, but good fighters, and he's shown a lot of grit, and he's showing it in this match as well. Matagua, the fighter from Tanzania by way of Philadelphia, against Juan Manuel Lopez. And Lopez, who boxed effectively over the first couple of rounds, got caught a little bit in round number three. Let's see if he can continue to keep Matagua at bay. Yeah, that's what he needs to do. Uh, give him angles, give him movement, lose his speed. Don't stay in front of him. I, I tell you what, when he when he caught him with that right hand, when Matagua caught him, before that came a headbutt, he headbutted him, then he came with the right hand. So that might be just a dirty tactic. You never know with Matawa. He is from Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. And we just lost about uh, and how many subscribers are? And <laughs> Bernard Hopkins. I mean, I, if he's listening, he is known for hit buddy. So. Big left hand by Lopez. So Lopez flat at a right hook, but Matawa just won't stop coming at a right hand by Matawa. Rogers Matagua came here to give it his all, and he has. And Lopez power punching here in this round. But a right hand lands by Matagua. And this is looking, as you said, Steve, like a typical Matagua fight. Right hand clubs the head of Lopez, and he lands a left. A right by Matagua, and another left by Lopez. Round three has turned out to be something special. 
It's a Matagua type fight. The question yes. is, does that suit yeah. Lopez well? Not at all. That Lopez is making the mistake of, of standing in front of him, going toe to toe. It's too early in the fight. He needs to work the body, get him tired, keep boxing him, and then try to finish him up in the later rounds. Now, part of the reason is Matagua won't stop coming to him, so he's put a lot of pressure yeah, on him as well. He's being forced to to do and to stand in front of him. There's some awkward action. Eddie Cotton doesn't intervene, but. Uh, when they get back to their feet. But round three has been exciting. It's been wild. A right hand by Matagua lands. Under a minute left to go. Right hook by Lopez. 